What do you do for an Achilles tendon injury? That's the question that I'm going to answer in this video. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm going to tell you what types of Achilles tendon injuries you can have and some tips to help the most common type of Achilles tendon injury. Now, if you find this video helpful, give it a like or thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our other feature videos. So what are the various types of Achilles tendon problems? There are lots of different Achilles tendon injuries ranging from an Achilles tendonitis, an Achilles tendinopathy, an Achilles tendon tear, or an Achilles tendon rupture, where the tendon fibers rupture completely and tear apart. Now, I've already had a recent video about the difference between Achilles tendonitis, Achilles tendon tear, and Achilles tendon rupture. But today I want to talk about the most common type of Achilles tendon injury, and that's Achilles tendinopathy. So what is Achilles tendinopathy exactly? Achilles tendinopathy is a slow overuse injury. It develops over time. It's usually not something that happens right away from an acute injury. And what that means is you may not know that it's coming on until it's gotten pretty far down the road. So how does that happen? Largely that comes from using either poor biomechanics doing repetitive activities such as running or jumping, or using improper training habits such as increasing your mileage too quickly, wearing poor shoe wear, or using shoe wear that doesn't support your foot type appropriately. And so we're gonna talk about some various treatments that you can use to stop an Achilles tendon injury that's coming from Achilles tendinopathy. So what are some ways that you can treat an Achilles tendinopathy? Well, in an Achilles tendinopathy, the tendon fibers, which normally run straight up and down in your Achilles tendon, vertically, kind of like spaghetti in a box, they get disorganized, they're partially injured, but there's no inflammatory chemicals like in an Achilles tendonitis. And so that means that the healing process that normally comes following an inflammatory injury is it never takes place. And so your tendon fibers, they heal sort of in a disorganized fashion like a cook's plate of spaghetti. So instead of being straight up and down like this, you have tendon fibers that are kind of jumbled. Furthermore, the parts of your tendon cells or muscle cells that make energy, they aren't functioning quite at the capacity that they normally should. That's the mitochondria or the energy factories, if you remember those from high school or college biology. It's where basically you turn sugar from food into ATP, which creates energy, and allows you to do the various things that you want to do, whether that be walking or running or hiking or jumping. And when those cells are worn down, then you make energy by a different process. And that has a lot of different byproducts, one of which is lactic acid, which can build up in your tissues and become painful. So one of the best ways to treat an Achilles tendinopathy problem is through doing aerobic exercise specifically for your calf muscles to build back up the tendon carry, the oxygen carrying capacity of the tendons. Now, how do you do that? Walking and running are great aerobic activities, but if you've already, if you've had poor biomechanics and that was the activity that got your Achilles tendon injured in the first place, then that's not always the best activity to rehab it. Although doing just general aerobic activity such as walking if you got hurt from running, or doing exercise biking, walking in the water, swimming, anything that you can do to increase total body circulation and increase blood flow is gonna help a tendinopathy problem, whether it be your Achilles tendon or your patellar tendon or a tendon in your elbow, such as in tennis elbow. Aerobic exercise is great for tendon injuries. But another thing that you wanna do is local high repetition exercise at the muscle that's involved. For the Achilles tendon, that's the calf muscles that attach by the Achilles tendon to the heel. And so the typical protocol for an Achilles tendon rehab is doing high repetition calf raises. Now there are various prescriptions that you can use and various protocols that you can use, but research has shown that just an as tolerated protocol of doing eccentric exercise, which means lowering a weight, not so much lifting like you're doing a bicep curl up, but slowly lowering that weight down. And that's called eccentric exercise. And that's the type of exercise that is really helpful for an Achilles tendinopathy problem. So how do you do that? Well, you do that by heel raises. 
and we'll use these tools later. But to do heel raises for an Achilles tendinopathy problem, you'll want to hold on to something for some balance and go up on two feet. Now let's say my left foot here is the one that's involved. You go up using two feet, and then you come down slowly just on the involved leg or the left leg in this case. Then you go up on two feet and come down slowly on the injured leg. Go up on two feet and come down slowly on the injured leg. And research shows that you should do that both with your knees straight as well as with your knees bent because your knees bent activate the soleus more than the gastrocnemius muscle, which is the one you see from the outside. But the soleus is really the workhorse of your calves. It's the one that does the, the deep muscle, the one that does the aerobic capacity. Um, the, the soleus is really the muscle that you want to rehab. So you could do that by doing knees bent and doing heel raises like that, or up on two, down on one, up on two, down on one. You can also do soleus raises sitting down in a chair with weight on your legs where you go up and then come down. They have weight machines at the gym that you can do that or you can just take dumbbells or a weight plate and place it on your lap and go up on two and then down on one or just go up on two and then come down slowly on two as well. So those are exercises for an Achilles tendon problem. Now, what about stretches for an Achilles tendinopathy? Well, the funny thing about Achilles tendinopathy is that a lot of times the tendon is not tight. It's actually overstretched because you have fibers that have had micro tears in them. And so the tendon actually gets lengthened, but the calf muscles themselves can be stiff. And that's why the tendon gets injured because the calf muscle can't stretch. So the tendon has to stretch more. Now doing calf stretches is great, but that also lengthens the Achilles tendon as well. And if you're having a painful Achilles tendon that's already overstretched, you don't want to stretch until you've loosened up the calves. Otherwise, you're just going to keep the stiff calves stiff and overstretch the overstretched Achilles tendon. So how do you loosen up the calves without loosening up the Achilles tendon? Well, there are a lot of different tools that you can use to do that. You can also do things in therapy like manual trigger point therapy or trigger point dry needling, which are both great for Achilles tendon problems or treatments like soft tissue mobilization with tools and I'll show you a little tidbit of that that you can do on your own as well. But if you need some manual trigger point therapy or trigger point dry needling, or if you try some of these tools that I'm about to show you and you don't get some help, seek out a physical therapist. If you're in St. Louis, we'd love to help you out. Just contact us at More for Life and we'll get you scheduled in for an appointment and help you figure out how you can get your Achilles tendon feeling better. But if you're watching a video on YouTube, chances are you're probably looking for something you can do on your own right now. So here are some tips you can do to help loosen up your calves without further injuring your Achilles tendon. One tool you can use is a massage roller stick. You can actually use a baking rolling pin if you have one of those around the house. But having one that has individual little beads that rotate can help you get to the smaller muscles in your calves without uh, you know, beating up everything. It can help you just isolate a little bit. A little bit. Um, it has a smaller circumference than a rolling pin, so you can get a little deeper as well. But essentially, you take that rolling pin and you roll up and down the backs and the sides of your calves and just find the areas where it's kind of sore and try to roll up and down like that. So that's one tool that you can use to loosen up your calf muscles. Another treatment that we use in therapy is uh, augmented soft tissue mobilization or soft tissue mobilization with tools. And that may consist of using metal tools or plastic tools. The, every manufacturer will tell you that their tools are the best. They all kind of do relatively the same thing. In fact, you can use a you know, $25, $30 set of gua sha tools that you get on Amazon, which are a reproduction of stones that they used millennia ago in China to scrape the skin or scrape the muscles and get them loosened up and feeling better. Um, I got these tools just off of Amazon. They come in a set and they're various different shapes. But these are the ones we use in the office now. You don't need anything fancy or expensive. Um, typically you want to take some cocoa butter, some lotion, put it on your calf muscles just so the tool slides a little bit easier and it doesn't tear up your skin. And then you run the tools along the back of the calves. Usually it helps to have your leg rested on something 
where your calf muscles are relaxed. And again, you just kind of roll it up and down the back of the calf, sort of leading at an angle. You don't want to be straight up like this. You also don't want to be perfectly flat. Kind of going at about a 45 degree angle. So you've got a little bit of that rounded edge sort of scraping over the skin muscles or scraping over the skin. Um, it's not really scraping the skin as much as trying to engage the fibers of the calves that are a little bit disorganized. Um, you also can go over the tendon fiber itself gently. Don't put a lot of pressure on, but research has shown that uh, this helps stimulate those tendon fibers that are kind of disorganized and look like a plate of cooked spaghetti to lay down in a more organized fashion. Now that's just one part of the treatment. You still want to do other things like the heel raises that I showed earlier to help further that stimulation process. But using some soft tissue mobilization around the tendon and around the heel and on the calf muscle is one thing that you can do on your own. You're not trying to beat up the muscle or tear it up as hard as you can. If you're bruising yourself, you're probably going way too hard. And when these tools were originally developed, um, not the gua sha tools years ago, but the US versions, they used to think you really had to scrape in hard because you were manually trying to break up knots. But really, it's more of just a stimulation to stimulate your muscles to reorganize, stimulate those tendon fibers to lay down more normally. It just stimulates a physiological reaction. It's not a me mechanical break up knots thing. Um, so again, you want to stimulate your tissues, not annihilate your tissues. So those are the various tips of things that you can do to help an Achilles tendon injury, specifically an Achilles tendinopathy. Again, doing eccentric heel raises, gently stretching your calf muscles without overstretching the Achilles tendon, and then using some tools like augmented soft tissue mobilization with gua sha tools, or a rolling pin or a muscle roller stick um, on the back of your root calves. And if you need some further help, if you need to figure out what the biomechanical problems with your running or walking were that started the problem in the first place so that it doesn't come back, or you'd just like a more specific tailored program to use so that you're not having to guess and you have the reassurance that you're going to get better as quickly as possible, we'd love to help you out. Contact us at More for Life and we'll get you scheduled in and help you figure out what's going on and how we can get you back to the activities that you enjoy doing. And if you found this video helpful, give it a like or thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for listening and have a great day.